Hello and welcome to Magathea Build Our Worlds. So this is a Necromunda Ash Waste build. In fact, this is part two, part two, uh, of the wreck, ridge, ridge hauler wreck, wrecked ridge hauler. I can't remember what I called it in the first video. The ridge hauler wreck build, in fact. Um, yeah, here it is. This is where we are at the end of the last video. Um, a perfectly good ridge hauler 8 model that's been taken and then kind of like trashed and embedded in this rocky outcrop. You'll remember that I wanted it to look a bit like this which is the illustration in the end piece, of course, in the Ash Waste rulebook. I wanted that kind of like Rex thing going on, uh, being used by the Ash Waste nomads. Um, I wanted it to look like it's been there for some time. Um, and uh, I, I want some fairly kind of large-ish pieces that look kind of cool. It will take Ash Waste games a bit beyond what's just in the box set. Um, so it went really quite well last time. Uh, I did also... Uh, um, uh, ask you guys for ash waste ideas and I have had a couple of people send me some stuff in um, and certainly from uh, uh, I am Grey's uh, a good idea then I reckon we'll both work on and we'll probably end up hopefully one day put them on the same table we'll have to see how that goes next um, after this model is finished um, thanks to everybody who responded to the last video and told me what they're doing while they're watching my videos it's really cool loads of hobby gonna be going on I know while you're watching this uh, and then loads of other things too as well so if you are a sit back uh, drink a cup of coffee and watch Tim in his workshop get on and do it then uh, Go put the kettle on, because this is going to be a really good one. This is going to be a lot of fun finishing this model off. If you are a get on with your hobby while you're watching Tim do his thing, then uh, um, then get your projects out. Uh, put me on over there, or over there, or wherever the hell you are. Uh, and, um, yeah, let's make this model uh, together while you're finishing your projects as well. Um, yeah, uh, let's uh, have a closer look and uh, see what we've got to do now. Here we are then, sir. Very pleased with this model. The uh, rocky outcrop is made uh, with uh, XPS foam that was heavily sculpted last time. 10 millimeter thick uh, XPS foam initially, uh, which has all been covered in polyfiller mostly. I mean, there's the odd bit that hasn't been covered so great, but I can cover that up quickly. And then, of course, when we look at the actual illustration in the book, the Rich Hall 8, which has been driven up. Uh, maybe onto the rocky outcrop and then be destroyed and crashed and that kind of thing. So it's all tipped over. Um, uh, if you cast your mind back to the last video, you remember that I kind of only built half of it. I've saved a load of pieces off this to go in my cack box. Um, and uh, uh, this has got real potential here. I haven't put the roof on. Could have the roof added to it, but I might end up with some stuff coming across here. The fun bit now with this model is going to be adding detail, I think. Uh, I want it to be uh, having been looking you know, looking like it's been adopted by the Ash Waste Nomads as, as a dwelling of some kind. Because, you know, these, the containers are just so cool. They crop up everywhere. Loads of my models and loads of other people all across the world use these containers for hab units for... Uh, Necromunda and 40k and elsewise. Now one thing is quite clear and obvious already straight away is that I've already started to make improvements on this cheeky before I started this video. In the illustration you can see that there's sand clearly right across here and into the unit um, and there wasn't enough here filler. Uh, that was going to take a huge amount of filler, make the model heavier and that kind of thing. So I've already added uh, an offcut of XPS foam stuck on with PVA. The first thing I'm going to do then is then use filler around here to cover up this piece of XPS foam, have more of a kind of like slope up there and have sand spilling into the container. Um, then detailing well the all everything that's polyfiller obviously is going to have to be covered with sand uh to give it that ash waste rocky kind of sandy kind of feel uh and then there's stuff that i'm going to need to add to it afterwards uh um, and that's going to be playing around with other stuff again there might be some kit bashing rather than just digging through the cack um i have got a couple of marketplace kits that I haven't used yet. I definitely want to use some for my um, sump models, 
but uh, there's some definitely some bits in there that would work really well for this. Certainly the canopies on metal frames and that kind of thing. I might be able to hang one place or another to um, uh, you know make it look a bit more lived in. Um, I also want to try and make sure I've got enough areas on this model that I can actually get figures uh, to stand up. This isn't too bad actually, by the time this is smoothed and sand, I should be able to stand in there. They'll stand roughly inside here and on the top of the model and I've deliberately left some flat surfaces on some of the rock places. Um, rocky bits, pinnacles where you can put models, especially if I then um, join these together so models could go across. So. <clears throat> loads of little bits of detail to add. There could be all sorts of discarded bits of this vehicle scattered down in the sand maybe. Um, I tend to think that the nomads don't give a monkeys about broken up bits of vehicle. They don't need the um, wreck of a vehicle in a way that it would be useful to members of the guilds or to gangers and that kind of thing. So this could be, well be a thing that was fought over because it could be recovered. It looks in pretty good nick. Um, I think I'm going to add some battle damage to it as well. Um, scar it up a bit because it does look terribly neat. So it needs, um, yeah, bullet damage at least or something else like that. The wheels need to be covered more in when need more sand here, more filler across here in the illustration there, more buried in the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of fun this time just tinkering with this, uh, getting the texture of the whole thing right, getting the whole overall feel right. Um, Maybe adding some stuff inside the container, uh, you know, that's to do with the, the dwelling of the nomads as well. Who knows? Uh, and then I'm going to root through the uh, uh, ash waste nomad kind of um, kits that I've got, the Helamites kits and the, the warriors, to see if there are any little trinkets and things that I could add to add character as well. So. What's first? First, find some polyfiller, cover this bit up, and then leave that to dry. Then the whole thing, all of the uh, uh, foam, or oh, it's not foam, is it? What is it? Polyfiller. All of the filler will need to be sealed, I think, with a Mod Podge coating, um, and then I can get on adding other stuff. Yeah, I think that's what we could do first. Let's find the polyfiller. Well, it's a bit contrived, I suppose, because. Because of the size of the terrain piece, it couldn't, you can't have the, you know, the, the, the terrain piece has got to be practical, be able to be put away, you've got to fit in a, on a table and rest it. So, in some ways, it doesn't have that kind of great sweeping grandeur that the end piece in the book has, but it does kind of work. I've now built up polyfiller so it kind of swifts. I haven't covered up that bit of foam there, though. So, it now sweeps up and into the back of the uh, container to a certain extent you can probably just see that, can you see that brush going there? Um, I'm using water just to get the filler to where I want it to be I'm going to leave, leave it of course all to dry and then it will all get covered in sand so it doesn't matter too much about the texture of the filler right now and I could chip it off in other places I've also gone round and put more filler in the wheels here, gunk them up more so more and more of it is covered up with sand so they pile up there. I was going to pile this right up inside but I think I like the detail here of engine blocks and bits and pieces that aren't completely covered in sand. It'll make it more interesting to paint. Um, and I've also buried, how can we see that? buried more of the front of the vehicle down here with filler too. Um, so apart from that, I've used up pretty much the whole tube. Uh, I'm now at the point where I've blended it in with the older stuff. And I now need to leave it all to go off again. At that natural stopping point where I just need to let filler dry. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave the filler alone. Let it dry for 24 hours or so. Because the surface stuff will be dry in 20 minutes. But... I've packed it in quite a lot in places, so in some cases it's going to need a little while longer to go off. And that's fine. Then I'll be able to think about sealing it all, covering it all in actual sand and ash. Yeah, coming on. 
Right, so we're all now, all this new plaster on the wheels, sloping up into the back of the container and everything else. I've decided the next thing I've got to do to make any of it, more of this make any sense is put the ash into ash waste. So I'm now going to mod podge this and uh, at the same time use coral sand on the entire model uh, to make the solid surface, it's going to make it really heavy uh, but what that will do is that will then I'll still, then be able to see what's going on with what's what and I'll build the detail on top of that so yeah well, we're going to get a big brush out we're going to use mod podge paint over the entire thing in glue cover it in sand, coral sand leave that to dry and then add the details that's the plan here we go uh, what do I need? I need Mod Podge Matt Mod Podge and I need the brush that I just went and prepared just for this job big fat old Citadel terrain brush inch wide and I'm literally just going to start by painting glue over the entire plaster model and the hardboard base down the bottom um, plenty of glue not being shy with the glue because I basically want everything that's currently white to end up all sandy um, and we'll go from there Okay, now we are totally in business. Check this out. This is now covered in all the sand and the grit, the, the uh, um, budgie sand that I, I tend to use, coral sand. You can see, get a close up, let's bring this close to you. You can see here, uh, broken up bits of shell and stuff in here which give this sand a lot of the great texture, which is brilliant, brilliant stuff for when you're dry brushing. So now I've got sand inside the model. I've got all the grit and texture on. There are a few places where I'm going to go back and touch up with the odd extra bit of Mod Podge and a bit of sand, I miss the odd place. But on the whole, what I need to do now is start thinking about adding details to make this look more like the model. I've got to start thinking about adding details now to make this look more like the picture that's in the rule book. Uh, and one of the first things that struck me about it is uh, there's some kind of canopy um, out the back here. Uh, now, I did I think I'd go digging through the cack which just do this bit first of all but um actually I'm gonna dig through the cack to add a few more bits of detail around about the place. Uh but actually one of the main things I thought I'd do is actually open some model kits up Yeah, that's gonna sound that's gonna sound crap on a t shirt. I can stick to digging through the cack on a t-shirt, but I am going to trash some kits. Um, I thought I'd start with, this is my first port of call, of course, which is the um, uh, Underhive Market Kit, because I thought I'd fancy some of these. These might work really well as canopies. Um, and I could, but then something else struck me when I was looking at, I've been looking at various other people's builds on uh, a couple of necromander sites. Do you know what? There's some bloody good bit scenery builders out there, um, and people are just putting stuff together. And I noticed that. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm gonna have to go and get it. Wait a moment. Don't go away. I'll be back in a minute. Uh. <laughs> Here we are. I'll go back again. This is uh, the detail sprue of the um, Habby units out of the Ashwaite's box set. And uh, this canopy here, this bad boy here, or one similar to it, I think it's going to be much better shape. It's going to hang off the back. It's got these standy up poles. I think those are the standy up poles for it. One there and one there that I can kind of stick up off there. And uh, yeah, so this is not going to feature on a hab unit. I am going to do a piece of scenery from a hab unit, thanks to uh, my mate Paul, um, who suggested that we do that. That'd be kind of cool. But this I'm going to use on this here. I think, yeah, okay, looks kind of cool. Find the clippers, cut it out, and that's where we're going to start. 
and of course the cool bike the advantage of this is the fact that I'll be able to maybe find a way of sticking it on with polystyrene cement, welding it to the model, which will help from a sticking point of view as well. And this will give start to give this ridge hauler that feel of it's been stuck there for some time, so much so that the nomads have gone, alright, we'll turn that into a house. I mean look, if I can suspend that on the back somehow. And uh, up there, like that, yep, and with a couple of poles, then uh, that will really catch the kind of feel of the uh, original illustration, I think. Um, so, yeah, give us a minute, I'm gonna have a fiddle around with that. God damn, look, all I've done is kind of like just stick that on there, come up. It's not even stuck on. It's just kind of stood there, and um, yeah, it's already working. I can stick that there, this pole here, and this pole here. Then I'll sand around the base of those to make them look like they're stuck in the ground. Uh, and then uh, we've got a bit of ridge canopy over the back of that. That's really neat. <laughs> All right, that's a nice, simple little bit of mashing up two kits. Ah, always gets me when people produce amazing things on on a. Uh, Facebook pages and groups and things where they've, they've kind of totally got the town with putting really clever things from different kits together. This has not been really clever, but it is kind of effective and uh, it's going to look really, really cool. So, yeah, I'm going to cut off um, the hoopy bits at the back and I'm just going to have that kind of lashed to the back of the ridge hauler. But then that gives that bit, extra bit of kind of like shelter out the back of it uh, for when the guys who live there kind of like come home. That's really neat. I'm going to have a pile of stuff down here, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really loving this. I've got to now add more details. Junk and then cover it in sand. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm going to stick that on. And then it is, I think, going to be time to go digging through the ca 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 that's the echoing of the cack around the valleys of the ash waste there. I hope you like that extra bit of kind of like ambiance. Uh, that little kind of like, just that little bit of extra atmosphere. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I'm going to scatter some extra bits of junk around about the place. I don't know enough about the ash waste. No, Max, do they care about junk in a way that kind of like some of the kind of the direct, the other uh, gangs do? Oh, they're going to be a bit oblivious to it. I just need bits scattered. Uh, there's there's going to be more now scattered around this than there is in that picture, uh, I think. But um, yeah, it's kind of cool. I've got lots of flat surfaces. I'm going to stick together a couple of no ash, no, no ash waste nomads as well. Even if I don't paint them, just to make sure they kind of look right. But although I might squeeze a bit of paint onto them, just to kind of like put them on here when it's done and make it look pretty at that bit at the end of the video. You know the bit at the end of the video I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, mission then. Stick on canopy on back of ridge hauler. Then dig through cack. Excellent. Let's do that. All right, so I wasn't really so much digging through the cack as looking through all the sprues that I've come, haven't cut stuff off yet. Um, I think I could probably use the back door to the container as the roof for another bit of shelter somewhere. Uh, and I think I might use some suspension parts off the wheels that I haven't used um, to maybe support some of that. So the nomads have kind of picked up wrecked bits of ridge hauler and kind of um, stuck it up. Uh, and propped things up that might work quite well um, a bit of ladder off the hab units from the box set go up the side to get easy access onto the onto part of the, the ridge hauler I think um, again from the hab unit I've got this like, little weather kind of uh, wind generator kind of thing that'll look quite cool out there I've got bits of crude food uh, 40k, that is actually digging through the cack, 40k crude stuff, uh, ribs and things, and a uh, horse's skull on a spike, and um, and I'm going to keep going and just fiddling and, and sticking and adding stuff. Oh, Among Vars from the, uh, uh, Among Vars from the, the marketplace, that's going to end up being stashed somewhere as well. Just as an extra little detail. So this is going to be a case of adding extra little details to this model. Um, it's going to be a bit of fun now. Uh, a little bit of extra stuff to paint. 
and uh, uh, put, I've got to put the, the roof on top of the ridge hall although I might have that torn off in some ways because uh, then there's access to the inside of the, of the cockpit um, so yeah I've, I've done some digging to the cat car and I'm going to do some more um, and uh, stick bits on as we go All right, different angle here's quite a nice little idea I cut this step in just here because it would be quite cool for to be able to put models on and I'm, I'm consciously de desperately trying to make an effort to make sure I've got more level bits that I can put models on as well as actually kind of like make a nice looking piece of train um, so I've taken this connector from a trailer and the ridge hall right and I've got the door from the back of the container which I'm going to place over there stick that on that's going to make a roof and make an artificial cave down here uh, for a nomad to dwell in or a nomad for them to stash some kit in. I'm going to put the odd uh, water bottle and bits and pieces in, in here. But then that, that would kind of like be a, I kind of imagine that being a nomad's kind of bunk. Uh, and this will give a nice roof, which I'll put more sand around so it's kind of like buried in a little bit. But then it will also give a nice decent flat platform for figures to stand on as well. So uh, functional because it will lay gameplay, but also it will make a nice little feature on the model. Um, so that would be kind of neat. So I'm going to stick that on, and then I'll sand on that tomorrow. I'm going to add some details in here too. <laughs> uh, I could do with more bedding. Bedding like I used to use on the deck um, on the on the sump, kind of like uh, sea stuff. But that kind of thing, a bedroll and stuff. But maybe I've got... I could probably find... How about a spare backpack... Because, uh, yeah, the little bits of, of kit from the from a, one of these dudes make it a bit more ash waste nomad -y kind of thing. little back banner uh, and a backpack maybe of some description hanging up. That'll make it look, yeah, right for that kind of, yeah, nice. Okay, that works for me. <laughs> um, spare gun? Yeah, you know, one of the things you can always do, I like these, because there aren't really any spare weapons on the Nomad Sprue, but I think what I might do is take something like well, this long rifle or whatever that is, and gently carve the hands off, and that could be stacked up in there as well. Yeah, let's see what we can come up with. That'd be cool. Oh, one last thing I'm doing before I go to bed this evening is I'm using one of these hobby chisels. There we go. Sets from most hobby stores. Uh, quite nice. Just to carve some damage, scratch some kind of like weathering into the vehicle where it's kind of seen worse days. I mean, this one's been here some time, so. Uh, I did that across the top of the that bit I just used for a roof. But. It just, it just means you can get some. Really good digs and scratches. This vehicle has seen, I mean, all ridge haulers on the whole need some of this on it because, you know, it's. They've seen a lot of action out in the ash storms and waste. And, so I'm quite tempted to take this to most any I mean, the actual working ridge haulers as well, just to add some extra battle damage and scarring. Uh, I'm actually going to put a hole right in this side of this canister here, you know. Been there sometime, let's rip that out. Yeah. We're going to have to see inside. Not that you'll be able to see inside because it's going to be pretty dark, but that's kind of neat looking at it like that. Alright, well, now we're coming on nicely here. I've got a ladder up the side of the wreck. I've got bits and pieces in there. I've got my canopy up now and bits. I've got to start covering some of this in sand so it's lost in there. Um, I wrecked this side of this nicely. I think I'm going to cut the top hatch out. I'm going to try and add. Uh, there we are, we can see that. A couple of other details to the top. Uh, they've got a little radar dishy thing here, I think, which I'm probably not going to do, but I'm going to add some other kind of aerial type things and stuff on the top there 
I noticed there's a little table down here which I've kind of I'm adding stuff around the other side. So I'm getting there. I'm going to keep adding detail. Uh, yeah, this is quite nice. It's coming along quite nicely. Got to go around and paint it at some point though, which is going to be a bit of a mare because we all know how much I love the painting process. So, uh, I'll keep going for a minute. Let's see what else we can do. So from the HAB units from Ash Waste, there's this kind of like wind generator -y thing. I'm going to figure out a way of sticking it on there. I think I'm going to use a bit of pylon from um, Cahadron Raiders kind of stuff. I'll take the dwarven sigils off. But this bit here with that on the top, that'll look quite neat on it, I think. That'll be kind of cool. Stood up right, um, and uh, this funky bit here as well off the top of a, a Cadron Raider um, airship that might look quite, look quite good on there too. So I'm nearly there with this to be quite honest. It's it's got quite a lot of detail on now. Uh, what I've got to do is go back to my sandbox and blend some of these things in. I've got bits of uh, old school skeleton that I might have sticking out in places, um, and I actually got this zombie hand. Which I think I'm gonna have reaching out of the ground like he's a body kind of like reaching up out of the sand. Um, so yeah, last few details to go on then, uh, and then the paint job. Happy days coming on. This video has got to be anywhere near as long as the first one. Uh, pretty straightforward. I've stuck a few more bits of broken uh, wheel axle assembly here, and a, a tire that needs yeah again sanding covering. So there's plenty of that there. So yeah, keep sticking details, Tim, for the minute, and let's see how we go. I've got to, I want to get bits where there are details where I can't put figures, and then try and leave as much flat space as I can so figures can stand on it. That's the kind of like current current thinking. Um, right. So pylon for wind generator. -y. Thing and then I'm going to go back to the HAB units and the uh, actual the ridge hauler model as well. I think maybe see if there are any other aerials and stuff that could be sticking up on it as well. Yeah, let's have a look in a moment, though. Okay, so I've added some kind of antenna array here and my little wind power generator thing. Uh, I've added a gun, shut cut down from the uh, Marketplace, and this now has got steps and various bits of kit in there that can be painted as well. So now I'm going to go back to my uh, sand pit and a mod podge, and I'm going to blend some of these things into the model um, with the sand. Uh, certainly the bits and pieces are lying around that way, there it all like as part of it. Then I'm going to let it dry, um, and then I'm going to Paint the damn thing. <laughs> hey, cool. Um, so what I'm going to do while it's, the glue is drying, I think is uh, stick together some Ash Waste Nomads. Might even paint the odd cheeky figure to go with this model. Hey, who knows? That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? So what do I need? I need um, my sanding tray. Ye oldy sanding tray. Here it is. Place the model upon. Find the mod podge, find the box of sand. You've all seen this before. I'm going to start over here with this wheel and these bits here, so they've got a bit of sand all over them. And then I'm going to do that with the rail bits too. We'll see what that looks like in a moment. Right then, I think that's the main assembly done. Um, now, Sanded and blended. Here's like the tyres here. So it's kind of like buried in the sand, and more bits of the vehicle are. These ladders are. Um, so uh, I'll get out all that dry. While that's drying, I'm actually going to treat myself, doing. Uh, and uh, here's a set of um, actual snow mates. I'm actually going to. Stick a couple together because they don't look overly complicated to paint, so you never know. I might even get some painted while I'm, I'm painting the whole model as well. Be nice to have a few paints to go along with it. So, we're gonna let this dry, stick some of these boy, bad boys together, uh, and then prime this undercoat. Yeah, let's see where we are. Coming on, I've really enjoyed making this model, it's been really good fun. Oh, happy days.
Right, that's my burnt umber all dried. It's uh, <laughs> really, really dried because I've been away for 10 days or so doing Halloween things. Um, so <laughs> this all got painted up just before I went away and then it hasn't had anything done with it. So back in the workshop now and I now need to start dry brushing up all the rest of this ash rock and whatever else and then start picking out more details and highlights on the ridge hauler that's what i need to do um so it's got this burnt umber kind of like base coat which is a bit red i'm not quite sure where to go from there really i might have to mix up some of that with a bit of i don't know xv88 i suppose see if i can water that down i might test patch a couple of places See what it looks like, you know, just dry brush a couple of bits, see how that comes out. That could be my best bet, I think, because uh, I don't want to just go for it, but I'm not quite sure where to take the colour after this. Oh, but it looks pretty good. I'm happy with the looking on the inside of the... the, the... Oh, can we see that in there? That looks quite neat. Certainly enough detail in there to... Stick figures in, have them stood in the doorway, that kind of thing. Right. What do I need? I need big brushes and I need paint. Right, so I now brushed over my burnt sienna with XV88. See it all colour, and now I'm going with a What's this? Uh, more gas bone. To lighten it even more. And I'll probably use the shabti bone or whatever is here yeah, on top of that. And I'll try to keep this deep red colour underneath, but I'm trying to really highlight it up as well. See how that works out. much in the way of dry brushing going on here but then the texture of the budgy sand the coral sand that I've used is great it really helps pick out does all the work for you really so well worth it I know there are loads of different Potential colours for ash. A really interesting conversation on uh, one of the Necromunda groups on Facebook. Can't remember which one now. I think it might have been the Necromunda train makers. Um, loads of people offering lots of different ideas for ash. Uh, so I don't know whether I haven't been bold enough. Well, this is kind of like red sandstoney. I kind of think might be kind of cool. Just come back from a 10 day stint in Warwickshire doing Halloween stuff at Kenworth Castle and that's like beautiful red sandstone and the earth around there. There's a whole bunch of works going on for HS2. Not going to open up that can of worms, but the deep, rich red earth around there is great. I'm kind of thinking the same kind of thing, but in a Really arid, deserty kind of way. So, yeah, it's gonna come on. I think it's gonna be all right. Okay, so quite happy with my ash colour now. Um, it's mostly just that burnt umber base plus. XC88 and Yushefti uh, and Morgoth's bone. And now I'm going to give it a bit more of a dry brush with Yushefti bone. Um, and then the next thing to do really is pick out just a few more details on the vehicle itself. Um, and some of the bases, this Mung vase down here, needs to pick out a little bit and make it a bit more obvious and a couple of other things too. But apart from that, we are very nearly done with this model. 
Normally, this is where I'd be sticking on vegetation, various other bits and pieces, but hey, this is the ash waste. So there ain't none. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's ask Ubiquitous Nomad what he thinks of, the, of it all. What do you think, Ubiquitous Nomad? Obviously, I can't do the accent. Oh, yes, it's very nice. Yeah, oh, clearly the model's not going to stand very well on it because it's all on the wonk, isn't it? But, uh. <laughs> Might have to paint some of them this weekend. Who knows? For regular viewers of this channel, especially those who watch it for Necromunda, please note that Ubiquitous Orlock and Ubiquitous Nomad are not related, regardless of the fact they share the same first name. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, back on with the defined detail painting. The moment when you take your perfectly nearly finished model and decide that you need to make improvements. This gun port needs to be just a hole. So what do we do? You take a Stanley knife to it and a scalpel. That was a fucking chisel. And a scalpel. I just carve your way in. Go to patch it out paintwork. I might just knack it a perfectly good model, although I think it's going to make it better because if nothing else, it's going to light up this area here better still. So from that point of view, <laughs> here's hoping, keep your fingers crossed, a bit late in the day to make go change in my mind. <laughs> Watch for your fingers, kids. No blood on this model yet. Right, well, I'm just about done with this, I think. I have sat and picked out some details. The problem with a model like this is I could sit and pick out details forever and a day. But I'm actually uh, really pleased with this. Rather kind of cool. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, I think, is uh, clear the desk down. Get some decent shots of it. Sadly, I haven't got any no-made waste figures pasted yet. But, uh, you know, it's pretty good. I like it. Let's have a closer look. All right, so um, we're going to go for it. We're going to add uh, just some symbols onto this vehicle just to show its registration numbers and bits and pieces. I like that extra layer of detail. Right, so to add some extra detail to this, just to the final finish, I think I'm going to use uh, the Ridge Hauler transfer sheet. Uh, and I'm just going to take some of the, the numbers off it and, and apply it a couple of places. Which I'll then probably paint over or scratch up a little bit and whatever have you. So some identification stuff. I'm starting with one of these down here, which says x9 on it i have no idea what that means but it's kind of cool um and uh, uh i'm gonna apply transfers which i haven't done in a long time but applying transfers is the same way same thing that he's been doing i've been applying transfers to models ever since the 1970s on my very first airfix kit here we go here is a scalpel blade with wet transfer Gonna slide it off onto the model. <laughs> Can we see this? Whoop. So I've got my slidey transfer, water slide transfers, these are called. And I'm gonna replace my X9, sliding it off the back in with the watt there. It's now stuck to my scalpel. That wasn't great until I hadn't done these for a little while. Twist it around so it kind of reads that way around. It's gonna sit on there quite nicely. Then of course you have to let it dry. I found you can always take a clean brush, apply some water to the transfer anyway to get it to sit where you want it to sit. Move it around a little. That's cool, uh, but really, really clean. So that is going to have to leave that to dry now. Just when I think I finished the model, I mess it up by putting something really, really clean, which is going to need to yeah, dry off. Um, and then get weathered as well. Oh, this is going to look, oh, is going to look a bit odd. Now you might also notice just here where my paintbrush is that this wind turbine on this little piece of plastic sticking up here it's been held in place by Blue Tech because when I came to the workshop tonight 
I was wearing one of my big favourite saggy woolen knitted jumpers, which caught it and just immediately snapped in half. So I'm now going to stick the bloody thing back together, which is a bit annoying, but you know, hey, that's that's the world of model making, really, isn't it? So I think I'm going to add something else along here, uh, another set of numbers maybe, or possibly something to the front, but I've already kind of trashed the front. So another set of numbers, some tiny little numbers in white on here. Um, so I might do some of that. Some of these, I kind of like it. Some of these have got like, what have we got? Well, we've got warning symbols. We've clearly got clan um, insignia here. Yeah, warning symbols here, clan insignia here. Um, and these are just names of planets in the 40k universe, which I'm assuming go on to the kind of like containers. So that's where they're going to or from. Um, uh, there are black and white clan symbols and then just loads of registration numbers so i'm only using the registration numbers um although i might stick a danger thing on somewhere that could be kind of cool i don't want to overdo it uh but uh yeah so i'm going to get a, 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 a registration number i think and just put it on there scout wall cut out a small registration number so this is eight three zero three slash one seven got it out with my scalpel now I'm going to stick it into water give it a minute or two now I'm going to stick it on here then after let it dry then I'm going to trash it a bit certainly put some sand over it or something else Yeah, look, that worked quite nicely. Just a bit of paint weathering over the top of those numbers there, and then up here, some of that decal scrubbed off and weathering over the top of it, just enough to add that extra little bit of kind of realism to the whole thing. It's pretty cool. I need to get this. So there you go. That's it. It's done. Here we are. I have to tell you what. Let's take out my supportive piece of blue tack. See if it. Shags the model or not? Wait a minute. Let's see if it's truly actually done. If this comes out all right, then we'll call it done. If this thing falls over while I'm doing this bit, then it ain't done. I've got to stick it back. Um. <laughs> oh, oops. Completely made a mess of that. Can't believe I did that. Right there, there it is. Done as it is. Twer as twer. This is the model. Now, if you remember rightly, um, the. Uh, picture in the book looks like this and then this looks like that now obviously it's not going to be exactly the same as the picture up here in the book because the picture in the book has got a kind of like curving arc kind of like massive great big rock formation on it which is a bit impractical to make, make on a, a standalone piece of terrain I reckon as a centrepiece on an ash waste battlefield this is going to look really cool um, and has set me up to make a number of other pieces i think that will look really neat around it as well so um first in a series of ash waste builds yeah i reckon so i've got a load of ash waste stuff so i'm definitely going to make stuff for with it for it um all i do want to get back down in the sump oh it's really frustrating there just is not enough time this video has taken absolutely ages to produce of course because i had to go and uh, do a massive Halloween gig uh, at the end of October with a team of people, which was brilliant, a great fun, but really frustrating because I wasn't here in the workshop. And then, of course, we've got all the build going on at, mo at the home at the moment as well, where the house has been completely torn apart, and, and it's just kind of like, yeah, we're nearly there with that too. So normal service hopefully is going to resume as throughout the winter. But um, I, uh, uh, considering all of that, I'm really quite pleased with this model make sure you leave comments down below give us a thumbs up you know a like and all that kind of stuff but let me know what you think have i achieved what i set out to achieve which is kind of like get something close to the picture there um or uh, is there something that i could have done to have made it better i'm always always interested in what you suggest always interested in, in learning um as i go with all of this because although i li love making these models of course and it's great fun um i'm always prepared to kind of like look at and see what other people are doing in the hobby and learn from them and magpie ideas that magpie and ideas by the way is a school 
uh, a phrase, an education speak thing. I'm sorry about that. Magpie and ideas meaning see something good and then nick it. Yeah, you know. Um, I've had quite a few of those. I've also had some pretty cool suggestions for other bits of train I can make to go with this. Um, Paul Grace, I am Grace, um, uh, sent me some sketches of some stuff that I reckon will work real well with Hab units built into the side of uh, more rocky out, sticky up outcrop stuff like this. I want to use at least one Hab unit for a, a, a sump C build, but yeah, definitely I reckon I could do that. Um, I haven't even worked out who lives in those Hab units. I take it that's regular people, not ash waste nomads. I was, yeah, well, I suppose so, yeah. Clues in the name. And, of course, the other thing that is distinctly missing from this build that I said, I can't see anyone around there, distinctly missing from this build, um, the way when I set out to do this in the first place, were those Gorgamorka, uh muti tents um, that I was going to use. Uh, I haven't done that, so I'm going to have to do an ash waste uh, piece of terrain with some muti tents turn into our ash waste nomad tents i think uh and we're going to work out a way of doing that too so uh plenty to come although next probably is going to be a patreon build uh because it's november and my next patreon competition is in december thank you to new patrons who have signed up recently um if you want to sign up on my patreon it's uh can be found at patreon.com slash which way is it going patreon.com slash magathea build worlds um and you can help support this channel Patreon totally helps make this model because Patreon's funding uh, bought this ridge hauler that I've been able to turn into this rather cool piece of scenery. So uh, to all my patrons out there, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so from that point of view, uh, the next build, the next video will probably be my uh, Patreon build and uh, have the winner of the competition from the summer. Uh, which, interestingly, for the first time I've been doing Patreon builds, um, it is actually going to be a Burrows and Badgers build. Uh, because yeah, that was uh, I've got a couple, there were a couple of really good ideas for that. But one in particular, um, I've been thinking about for a little while now, and I think it's going to work out real well. So, watch out for that when it's coming. And I think as we get into December as well, there's got to be more ash waste stuff being built. Um, because I've had a real blast making this. It's actually not that complicated. Ash waste ter terrain. Um, the most of it is kind of like polystyrene and sand. Um, and the paint job was dead, dead easy, especially as soon as I realised I could splash around big, big uh, cans of, uh, you know, what's this, tubs of paint. It's pretty cool. That's my base coat. So, yeah, I'm happy with my ash waste colour. My ash waste colour then started off with um, this burnt umber, Windsor Newton. Uh, look, it's only eight quid for 250 millilitres. Compare that to your regular... Uh, paints you get for miniature painting way 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 more cost effective using this stuff um, and then dry brush on top of that so there's definitely going to be more ash waste uh, models to come as well um, so having said all of that uh, where are we yeah if you are new to my channel make sure that you give me a like and click subscribe um, if you are one of the old hands then thanks ever so much I love your comments whether you're a new viewer or somebody who's watched everything right from the get go um, so make sure you leave comments down below um, I will now leave you with this sexy rotating bit where we're going to get a closer look at this model and I'll see you next time on Magrathea Builder Worlds see you later cheers pew 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 I hope you liked all the ash waste sound effects back there in the background it's Fireworks night and lots of people out on motorbikes. I don't know why. Ass hats. <sighs> right.